Hello everyone, welcome back to Spectrum Classes. Today in this video, I am going to discuss about the spectroscopic term symbol. So here I have drawn the chart for a given configuration and here are the term symbols which you can see and here are the number of microstates. So what does these different terms mean and how we can understand such kind of terms and how we can evaluate the term symbol for a given system. These important points in this video I am going to discuss with you. Right. But before starting with the video, I will just ask you a question. Why this spectroscopic term symbols are important? The answer is here. We have this type of spectrum for the complex. And we can predict the different type of peaks here in this spectrum. The next question is this. We are not getting this type of term symbols. So what kind of term symbols which we are getting? So we are getting this type of term symbols. S, P, D and F. Once we know the term symbol, we can predict the set of orbital for that particular term. And we can predict the spectrum. So that is why this is very, very important to know the term symbol. So let's start with the video. And here I am just going to discuss with you all the steps one by one. So first, I'll just bring to your notice that if we are having electronic configuration, then what is the need of having this type of term symbol? Why we have elaborated all such terms here? In the electronic configuration, four quantum numbers are required to describe the complete description of a given electron in a multi-electron entry. So, for example, n L, M and S set of quantum numbers is required to define the position of an electron in a multi-electron atom. Here I just elaborated all these terms. What is N? It is known as principal quantum number and it has values 1, 2 and so on. This describes the energy and distance from the nucleus. That is what shell. Second, L is angular momentum quantum number. This is also known as azimuthal quantum number and it has values 0, 1, 2, 3 up to n minus 1. So here n is this. So it describes what sort of orbitals we are having. The third m, magnetic quantum number m, it has values minus L to plus L. Here, differing by 1. So it is restricted to this much value. So it decides the component of L that is what kind of orbital. For example, dxy, dyz, etc. The electron occupies. Next is spin quantum number. So spin quantum number describes the contribution from unpaired electron. These are the quantum numbers which have their own meaning and they describe the electron where it is present in a multi electron. But there are some drawbacks still. So, for example, I have an electronic configuration for carbon is 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. So, 1s2 I do not include it here. This do not completely or uniquely define the arrangement of electrons. For example, it does not tell us about the orientation of their orbital angular momentum these electrons occupy. So it means in which orbital it is present. This you can understand. This is the p orbital and it has plus 1, 0, minus 1 values of this ml. So, you can understand in this manner also. This is the vector L and this is having values ml is equal to plus 1, ml is equal to 0, ml is equal to minus. So, which kind of orientation it has? This electronic configuration do not tells us. Secondly, it does not describe the spin orientation of the atom, whether it is in plus half orientation or it is in minus half orient. So these are the important points which cannot be completely defined by the electronic configuration. Therefore, it is required the spectroscopic term symbols to assign all such values. Now coming to this. First, what we are going to do? First, we are assign the spin spin correlation. And after that, we are considering the electron-electron repulsion. 
which are electrostatic in nature and then we are going to the spin orbit coupling this is a spin a spin interaction second electron electron or their orbital angular momentum they how they interact and next is spin orbit coupling so here we are having these are the term symbols which are result of the electrostatic as well as magnetic coupling and these term symbols will have this many degenerate energy levels and these degenerate energy levels all together will give us the micro states now how we can be able to evaluate these energy levels so this can be evaluated by the formula 2j plus 1 so what is the value of j we can put that over here so 2 into 0 plus 1 we will get 1 2 into 1 plus 1 we will get 3 for this we are getting 5 for this again we are getting 5 and for this we are getting 1 and in this manner we are having different number of micro states for a given electronic configuration now the next point is that when electron electron repulsion is negligible these micro states are degenerate but when electron electron repulsion are taken into account the micro states that have same energy when grouped together leads to the introduction of term symbol so here we are getting this many different groups of microstates due to the electron electron repulsion and we are getting the different spectroscopically distinguishable energy levels which are termed as terms the term symbol represents the electronic configuration and different energy states of an atom so here we are having this capital l what is this capital l it is total orbital angular momentum the next is 2s plus 1 so what is that 2s plus 1 so before discuss about the 2s plus 1 altogether first we are going to discuss about this s here s is the total spin angular momentum and this 2s plus 1 is the multiple and the next is j this is the superscript and this is the subscript of this l so what is this j j is the total angular momentum which is come from the spin orbit coupling so this is the representation of a term symbol here what is this s l and j i have made already two videos on orbital angular moment the spin angular momentum total angular moment so if you really want to know about these terms you please go and check so here is the orbital angular momentum vector l for one electron it is represented by small l and for more than one electrons we combine them together and that will equal l it has orbital magnetic moment the next is spin angular momentum so here we are having l and if we consider this electron which is revolving about the nucleus in an orbit it is also spinning on its own axis so in that way it generates spin angular momentum which is again having the spin magnetic moment when these magnetic moments coupled together magnetically this is electros electron electron or electron nucleus interaction that is coulombic or electrostatic in nature the second one is spin spin correlation and the third one is magnetic interaction so these magnetic moments interact with each other and they will produce a resultant angular momentum here this is the spin angular momentum here is the vector l and these two all together will give the total angular momentum now coming to the ls and Russell solder coupling this suggests us three important points first is spin spin correlation second residual electrostatic interaction and the third one is spin orbit interaction we are going to discuss all the three points one by one first is the resultant spin angular momentum vector s here you can see the individual vector s or spin angular momentum of optical electron optical electron is for which we are going to write the term symbol are strongly coupled with one another to form vector s so this is the resultant spin angular momentum which is the resultant of spin spin correlation 
it has the magnitude equal to this much. So we are not going into detail because we have already discussed it. So here for one electron, this resultant is equal to the S1. One means for one electron. So for one electron, we are having one by two. The next one is resultant orbital angular momentum vector L. The individual vector L of optical electron are strongly coupled with one another to form vector L. So here it has magnitude this. For one electron, we are having capital L is equal to L1. L1 is for one electron. So whatever it is, if you are unable to understand this, so please be patient. I will solve the examples in the upcoming slide. The third one is total angular momentum, which is the coupling, spin orbit coupling. Right? So here, as a result of spin orbit interaction, of vector L and vector S. Vector, what is vector L here? That is the resultant orbital angular momentum. Vector S is the resultant spin angular momentum. These are less strongly coupled with one another to form vector. So that is why we are saying this LS coupling, right? Or Russell Solder's coupling. Total angular momentum has valued L plus S to L minus L, so differing by 1. It has possible values equal to 2s plus 1 if s is less than l or 2l plus 1 if l is having less than s value. So all such terms I will explain in my next slide. This ls coupling is applicable for the lighter elements of the periodic table for the atoms which are having their atomic number less than 30. Now I will elaborate it further. If suppose I am having two electrons, then what in that say the first electron is having half spin, the second electron is again having half spin, then the resultant will come as S1 plus S2, then S1 plus S2 minus 1 up to S1 minus 1. So if we add S1 plus S2, what we will get? We will get 1. If we subtract S1 minus S2 with the modulus, then we will get 0. So we are having for this resultant spin angular momentum two values 1 and 0. From this S, we can calculate the multiplicity. So what is multiplicity? 2S plus 1. So here for this 1, we are having triplet and for this 0, we are having singlet spin states for the two electrons. Right? Now coming to the Resultant orbital angular momentum for two electrons. Say the first electron is having L1 is equal to 1 and L2 is equal to 2. So what does it mean? It means our first electron is in P orbital for this one and the second electron is in D orbital. Right? So for L1, this is my one electron, this is my second electron. So for one electron, we are having L1 is equal to 1 and for second electron, we are having L2 is equal to 2. Now, this resultant angular momentum is having values L1 plus L2 to L1 minus L2, differing by 1. So on putting the values here, L1 plus L2, we are getting 3 maximum and L1 minus L2, we are getting 1. This is with modulus, so 1 minus 2 will get 1. Because of this modulus, we will get the absolute value. So write all the values differing by 1, 3, then 2, then 1. This is how we are getting the value. Here I have written 3, 2, 1. Fine. Now the next thing is that this 1 indicates the P state. This 2 indicates the D state and this 3 indicates the F state. If we are having L is equal to 0, we are having S. L is equal to 1, we are having P. For L is equal to 2, we are having and for L is equal to 3, we are having F, right? And so on. Just like electronic configuration. These are the values. So we are having these three states and these two multiplicities. Now coming to the J value. So J value is having L plus S to L minus. Here we are having two sets. So S is equal to 1 and 0. L is having for this set, 3, 2, 1. And for this set again, 3, 2, 1. You just write down values for J. So J will be L plus S to L minus S, 3 plus 1, 4. Then 3 minus 1 is equal to 
2. So 4, 3 and 2. For this, 2 plus 1, 3. 2 minus 1, 1. So 3, 2 and then 1. 1 plus 1, 2 and 1 minus 1, 0. 2, 1, 0. So this many values for J. Now coming to this, this again has 3, 2, 1 values. So here it is 0. Right. So for this, what we are writing the term symbol. So term symbol for this we have f is 4, 3, and 2, and the multiplicity is 3. For this set, we are having d, 3, 2, 1, and the multiplicity is 3. Next is p, 3, 3 2, 1, 0, and multiplicity. Is 3 and for this what we are writing f d and p again for these three values and here is the 3 2 1 values for j and multiplicity is 1 so this many term symbols are there if our electrons are in p and d orbital right so this is how you can write down the values now coming to this value Suppose we are having here 3p system. For this 3p system, we are having S is equal to 1 and L is equal to 1. Both are same. If both are same, then we are having 2S plus 1 value or 2L plus 1. Nothing matters. So here we are having means it is triply degenerate. So 2, 1 and 0 values are there. If we are having this type of system, so here S is 3 by 2 and L is 1. So for this, what you have seen, second case is there. Your S is greater than your L. Then its degeneracy is 2L plus 1 rather than 2S plus 1. So if we are having 2S plus 1 value, then it is degenerated by 4. If we are taking this value, then it is triply degenerate. Rather having this type of 4 values, we are having 3 values because it has possible values 2L plus 1. The next is KJ coupling. The orbital and spin angular momentum vector of each individual electron are strongly coupled together form a resultant angular momentum J of magnitude J is equal to L minus half and L plus. Here in this manner, we are getting value of a small J for each electron because spin orbit interaction for each electron is stronger. So I'll just elaborate it here. Here you can see suppose I am having this S and this P. So for this S electron I am just writing L value. L is 0 and S is 1 by 2. J is having values L plus S to L minus S. Right. So here are the values for this. It is equal to 1 by 2. For J, this S. This S. And for this P, J value is equal to L is equal to 1 for this P. And S is equal to 1 by 2. So 3 by 2 and 1 by 2. 3 by 2 and 1 by 2. So these are the values for this next electron. So these JJ electrons will couple together to form resultant J value. That is written over here. As a result of these residual electrostatic interaction and spin-spin correlation, the resultant angular momentum vector J of the individual electron are less strongly coupled, which is less strongly coupled, we named that. Right? So, with one another to form total angular momentum vector J. So, here this AJ coupling is important in case of heavier metals. I hope you understand the concept which I have discussed here in this video. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe my channel. Thank you all. Thanks for watching.